beautiful students, I am about to show you what tag questions are. Okay, so on the top of a clean piece of paper, write tag questions. When you're ready, please tell me. So before I begin to explain everything, there are a few terms that you need to know. The first thing, you need to know what the verb be is, which I'm sure at this level you know, and you also need to know what an auxiliary verb is, which again, at this level, you should know these things. Um, first, let's begin with the verb be. The verb be has many different forms. In the present, it has three. It has is, are, am, right? In the past, what are the forms of be? There are two. Where? Was and were, exactly. And in the past participle, we're not gonna use that one. We're just gonna use is, are, am, was, and were. Right, yes, we have been and we have being, but we're just gonna focus on the present and the past of these verbs. Now for auxiliary verbs, auxiliary verbs, the first auxiliary verb that you have ever learned in your English journey is probably do, you know, with questions like, do you like tacos? Do you wake up early? Do you drink water every day? We have do. What is do in with third person singular? Does. Thank you, Manu. Does. What is do or does in the past? Did. Did. All right. And those are auxiliary verbs for the present and the past. Do, does, and did. Remember, auxiliary verbs are usually the verbs that we use um, in questions. Do you like pizza? Does your mom like pizza? Did you work today? You know, those are usually the ones in questions. We also have have, has, and what is have and has in the past? Add. 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 Thank you, Alberto. All right, cool. Now, um, there are more auxiliary verbs, like including the modals, maybe can, would, um, will, etc. There are many, many more. Okay, but if you can, if you know these, you'll be okay. Now, it's important to know that. You also need to know what an affirmative sen sentence is and the negative sentence or an affirmative statement and a negative statement. All right, can everybody see that down there or is it too low? Can you see it? I can see it. Thank you, Donna. Yes. All right. So if I tell you, let's say, um, Michael Jackson was amazing. Is that affirmative or negative? Affirmative. All right, cool. Now, why is it affirmative? There are no negative words in that sentence. And the negative sentence or a negative statement would have a negative word, specifically a negative auxiliary, all right? Now, this isn't true, but a negative sentence would be Michael Jackson wasn't amazing, all right? That would be a negative statement. All right, so if you know the verb be, the auxiliary verb, an affirmative statement and negative statement, this lesson will be easy. 
All right, guys, do you know these? Is, is, is it clear? It's okay? Yes, teacher. Yeah. Right. Thank, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. So the reason that we use tag questions, I, I told you this at the beginning of the class. Um, well, there are many reasons. We can use it to check or confirm information. We can use it to like persuade or convince people. And we can also use it to sound less direct. And I'm, I'm pretty sure there are more reasons to use tag questions, but um, those are just the ones that I can think of right now. So let me give you some examples. If I ask you, Karina, if I say, Karina, you were born in 1995, weren't you? What, 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 do you think I, what do you think I'm doing here? Am I checking, persuading, or trying to sound less direct? Try to confirm. Yeah, I'm trying to confirm something, right? Yeah. You were, you were born in 1995, weren't you? You know, like kind of interested, trying to convince you, right? No, sorry, not convince you. I'm trying to confirm the information. Nice. Yeah. Now, if I say something like, these jeans are amazing, aren't they? What am I doing here, Alberto? What teacher are you in here yet? If I say these jeans are amazing, aren't they? Am I checking, persuading, or trying to sound less direct? Imagine we're at a store and you and I are shopping and I say, oh, these jeans are amazing, aren't they? <laughs> Dude, what am I doing? Convince. Yeah, I'm trying to convince, right? Maybe, I, uh, maybe you are my sugar daddy or my sugar mama. Hey, you know, hey, they're amazing, aren't they? No, por favor. I'm trying to persuade you, brother. Now, of course, in a way to sound less direct, maybe you, when you're given advice, you should use tag questions to sound less direct. Um, you should talk to the teacher. Shouldn't you? You know, if I say you should talk to the teacher, it's like very direct. It's good advice, especially if you have a problem in school. It's good advice, but it sounds very direct. And adding this, shouldn't you, at the end makes it more, well, makes it less direct. And these little things right here, weren't you, aren't you, shouldn't you, they are tags. All right. And the whole thing is called a tag question. So how do we make tag questions? How did I make these questions? It's pretty easy. There are two formulas, guys. I would like for you to write these formulas down in your book. Let's take this. Let's make it black. All right, the first one. If you have an affirmative, affirmative tag, sorry, an affirmative statement, you're gonna use a negative tag. And if you have a negative statement, you're gonna use an affirmative or a positive tag. Now, I know what you're thinking, like, what in the world is a tag? Well, a tag is the verb be or an auxiliary plus a subject pronoun. Okay, that is, that is a tag. So if you notice here in weren't you, we have the auxiliary weren't, and then we have the pronoun you. In the second question, we have aren't, which is the verb be, and then the pronoun 
they. And the last one, we have the auxiliary shouldn't and the pronoun you. Now, I didn't give you any negative statements. L let, me, let me give you some so you can see them. So you were born in 1995, weren't you? That's an affirmative statement. I can make that negative. You weren't born in 1995, were you? Or mm, these jeans aren't that nice, are they? You shouldn't, you shouldn't talk to her anymore, should you? So the first three, they are affirmative statements and the next three, they are negative statements. And then we have like the tag, you know? So the next question that a lot of people have is like, where do I get the tag from? Where is the tag? It's pretty easy. You gotta observe the verb in the statement. Here we have the verb be in the past. So we're gonna use the verb be in the past in the tag. Here we have the verb be in the present. So we're gonna use the verb be over here in the present. Over here we have should talk. So we're gonna use the verb should, the auxiliary verb. Now, where do we get the pronoun? Easy, is the subject of the statement. You, you. These genes, it's plural. What is the pronoun for plural things? They. And of course, you, you. Now, those are easy. With the verb be and with modal verbs, it's easy. It gets a little complicated with do, does, and did. But maybe not because you are advanced English learners. But let, let me give you a sentence. If I want to confirm that you like Hawaiian pizza, I can say, you like Hawaiian pizza, la la la, you? What do you think would be the tag here? Don't, doesn't, or didn't? Don't, didn't. doesn't, or didn't? Why didn't? Why didn't, Donna? It's not correct, but why do you think it's didn't? Where did you get that from? Um, because it's negative. Okay, it's negative, yes. Okay, well, don't and doesn't are also negative. Look at the verb like. What tense is this, the present or the past? Present. The present. So I have two options, don't and doesn't. Which one of the two auxiliaries goes with you? Don't. 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 Exactly. You like Hawaiian pizza, don't you? All right. Now, Donna, this next one is for you, okay? You ate tacos last night. Didn't? You or don't you? Didn't. Didn't. And why didn't? Because it's in the past. It's the past. All right, cool. Now, in, um, in negative statements in the present and the past, it's a little bit easy because the auxiliary is in the statement. For example, if I, if I say, you don't like Hawaiian pizza. The auxiliary is don't. So what would be my tag for this sentence? Enrique? Um, do you? Yeah, do you. Come on, with confidence, with confidence. <laughs> you don't like Hawaiian pizza, do you? You know, maybe I give you some Hawaiian pizza and you're like, 
Mm, and I can say, you don't like Hawaiian pizza, do you? You know, I'm checking. And I want to sound less direct. You know, you, know, you don't like it. Karina, what would be my tag for this? You didn't eat tacos last night. Did you? Did you? Good. Good, good, good. Why did, Karina? Because it's a um, past tense and negative form. Yes. So if it's negative over here, it's affirmative over here. All right. So here are some common mistakes that people make. First, they try to translate it to Spanish. ¿Te gusta la pizza hawaiana hacer no tú? No, look, in, in Spanish, it's going to be no. ¿Te gusta la pizza hawaiana, no? ¿Comiste tacos anoche, no? That's all it is. In Spanish, it's simple. Tag questions are simple. In fact, you can say it in English, too. You like pizza, you like Hawaiian pizza, no? And that's fine. But it doesn't sound elegant. It sounds really, how can I say it? Mm, it sounds really basic, elementary. You like Hawaiian pizza, no? But you like Hawaiian pizza, don't you? It sounds a little more, you know, higher class, more educated. And in the negative form, it would kind of be like saying, right? You don't like Hawaiian pizza, right? No te gusta la pizza hawaiana, verdad? You know, there is no like direct translation from English to Spanish. And I think that's why I like tag questions. It's, it's kind of unique in this case. All right, so that's the first mistake. People try to try to translate it directly. There is no, it's not a clear or a direct translation. The second mistake is that people if people have a negative statement, they want to use a negative tag. That's not correct. All right, for example, you shouldn't go out tonight. Shouldn't you? This is incorrect. This is wrong. How could I fix this sentence? Manu? Uh, you shouldn't go out tonight, should you? You shouldn't go out tonight, should you? Yes. You shouldn't go out tonight, should you? Maybe you're re you really want to go out, but you're looking at me like you don't want to because you have to study. You shouldn't go out tonight, should you? Just stay home, just stay home. Stay here with me. Or maybe you want, you could say, you should go out tonight. Shouldn't you? Maybe you've been in the house all day. You're depressed. You're sad. Ah, you should go out tonight, shouldn't you? Debería salir esta noche, no? All right. So it all depends. Like, what is your goal? Do you want to check? Confirm, do you want to persuade, convince, do you, or do you want to sound less direct? What is your goal? But whatever your goal is, tag questions will help you. All right, now let's do some exercises from the book. Go to page 101. I'm gonna help you with number one and you're gonna do number two by yourself, okay? All right, this is Chris Martin. This is Marilyn Monroe. Class, why was Marilyn Monroe famous? Do you know? I know she was a beauty, like beauty, I don't know, but why was she famous? Manu, do you know? You know a lot about famous people. 
uh, no, maybe because she was a sex uh, sexy symbol and and she was lovely of some presidents. Uh, she was a sex symbol and like lover. she was the lover of some presidents. Yes. Oh yeah. How could you not be famous after that? And cool. additionally, she was an actress. Ah, okay. <laughs> Just like the 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 cherry, no, the cherry on top. Cool. So look at this. Number one says, you've heard of Chris Martin. Right here is you've heard. What is the auxiliary in that statement? Have. Have. All right. And the negative of have is? Have it. So you've heard of Chris Martin having, what is a pronoun? You. Yeah, just take the subject, my friends. You've heard of Chris Martin, haven't you? I'm checking. I think so. He sings with Coldplay. Sings. Is that the present or the past? Present. Present. So I'm going to use do or does or maybe don't or maybe doesn't. But doesn't. it's affirmative. No, mm -hmm. doesn't, does. Okay. Doesn't what? <laughs> he, yes. He sings with Coldplay, doesn't he? Yeah, he's their lead singer. Right. They're not American. Aren't they? What'd you say? Aren't they? Aren't they? A negative statement with a negative tag? I don't think so, brother. Are they? Are they? Yeah. There you go. They're not American, are they? No, they're British. I love their music. They're a great band. Let's see. What would go there, Karina? Um, they are a great band. Aren't they? Aren't they? Yes, ma'am. Oh, yeah, they've raised a lot of money for charities, too. Look, be careful. They've raised. What is the auxiliary verb there, Donna? Harden. Oh, okay. You're giving me the tag. Haven't. Yes. And Danny, Daniela, what is the pronoun? They've raised a lot of money for charity, haven't? haven't. It's so easy. It's so easy that it's confusing. Haven't what? Haven't you? You? No. It's the same subject. As the statement, haven't they? Uh, haven't they? Yeah, haven't they? Okay, remember the subject pronouns just in case. I, you, he, she, it, they, we. Those are the subject pronouns. Remember, there are seven in English. Sometimes the pronouns are easy. They're directly in the state in the statement. No, they, I they he he but sometimes it's gonna they're gonna say names and you need to you know well if it's a woman she if it's a man he i mean they do a lot of charity concerts and stuff what would be the tag there class they do and they Repeat that, Alberto. Don't they? Don't they? Excellent, sir. All right, class, please complete number two by yourself. Be careful. Be careful with the present and the past, and be careful with have and has. Oh, present, past, have, has. All oh, that rhymes. All right, please, I'll be waiting for you. All right. To A, Enrique, and to B, 
Daniela, don't be afraid to make mistakes. If you make mistakes, that's fine. I'll just help you at the end, but I won't yeah. interrupt. Go ahead, break a leg. Okay. Mm, me the first? Yeah, you're first. When when was Marilyn Monroe famous? It was in the 19... 1950s. Okay, wasn't it? Yeah, but she made a movie in the 1960s to... Didn't can you? Enrique, are you there? Didn't she? Didn't didn't she? And uh, you're you're B. Oh. Wow. Sorry, yeah, yeah, you're A, you're A, I'm sorry, you're A. I think you're right. I think you're right. She was mainly a movie star, wasn't she? I mean, she wasn't a singer, was she? Well, she sang in some of her movies, but she was basically an actress. You've seen her movies, haven't you? No, but I'd like to. It's amazing, isn't it? She died years ago, but she's still famous. 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 All right. Yes, yes, yes. One more time. Famous. That's a word everybody has to know at this level. Faith. Famous. Miss. Famous. And guys, there were no mistakes in any of your answers. Congrats. That's good. That's good. Now, class, do you have any questions about this? No. No, teacher. No. All right. So I want you to practice these conversations in the breakout room. There is something that I want you to do though. Whenever you check information, the intonation at the end of the question, at the end of the question goes up, okay? So when you check, intonation goes up. And when you think your partner will agree, the intonation, goes down all right the intonation goes down so for example if if i am talking to manu and i know manu knows a lot about celebrities i can say um marilyn monroe was an important celebrity in the old days wasn't she i think he will agree with me so i go wasn't she my intonation goes down. But if I am checking, Marilyn Monroe was, a, was an important celebrity, wasn't she? Like I am checking. See, I want you to practice in the breakout rooms with the intonation. If you think that in this conversation, the people are checking something, it will go up, okay? You've heard of Chris Martin, haven't you? All right, but if I know that you're a rock star fan or you love rock, maybe I think you will agree. And I say, you've heard of Chris Martin, haven't you? Haven't you? It goes down. Big difference. Okay. So class, enter the breakout room. Practice the intonation going up and your intonation going down. It's literally, the intonation only matters in the last two words. Haven't you, sorry, haven't you, or haven't you? Doesn't he, doesn't he? 
however you think the conversation is going, if you're checking or confirming, use the context. And remember, sometimes the intonation will go, sometimes it will go down. And we will never be 100% sure because we are not in these people's minds, you know? So we, all we can do is guess based on the context. Practice the conversations two times and then come back to the main room, please. Go ahead, guys. Into the breakout room. Let me. What are some different ways or what are some different purposes of using tag questions? What are the functions of tag questions? To confirm. To confirm. What else? Persuade. Persuade. And what else? To sound, to convince, <laughs> convince, yes, but to sound less direct, less direct. And we, we also use them when we think the other person will agree. So good job. You told me that it was easy. I'm happy. I'm happy to hear that. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, tomorrow is the last day of class for this week. Please come early. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Have a good night. See you tomorrow, guys. Thank you. See you. Thank you for coming. Bye. Bye.